today of how to make apple fritters. And I am getting it out of my Better Homes and Garden cookbook. This is a small paperback version of the The Better Homes and Garden cookbook. This is from actually 1981, before I got married, had it in my hope chest. I've used it all these years, and the pages are yellow, so it's got to be a good recipe, right? Never made them before. It's on page seven, apple fritters. So follow me along on this uh, delightful adventure. Um, it's calling for one cup of all sift, all, one cup of sifted all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a beaten egg, two thirds cup of milk two tablespoons of butter melted, and three or four apples pared and cored, or 18 thin pineapple slices, and then salad oil. So it's asking me first to sift together dry ingredients, but I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do my apples first. I have these apple, no, opal apples. You ever had these? They're really, really good eating apples. But I think they'll be good for this too because you want a sweet apple for apple fritters. You don't want a Granny Smith for this. You want something kind of sweet, but not a red delicious because those aren't that sweet. So like a gala or, I think these opals will work fine. So let me get these um, peeled and cut up and I'll be right back. You want kind of like a little half inch square. drops of lemon juice because it's going to take me some time to explain all this. I don't want them getting brown. Hopefully that won't hurt the recipe, but my apples are just just on the wrong side of still being able to eat, so they'll be good for this recipe, I think. But I don't want them to turn brown real quick. Okay, so now, so sift together dry ingredients. That's what we first said. One cup of sifted all-purpose flour. One cup. I don't sift anything. Why? Because I don't have a sifter. I used to have a sifter. I don't know what happened to it. need another bowl. Hold on. One cup of all sifted, all purpose sifted flour. Okay, there's that. Two tablespoons of sugar. Maybe a little bit more than I needed. That's okay. More sugar, more sweet. Okay, baking powder, two teaspoons of baking powder. Two teaspoons. Let's see if I can find a teaspoon. I have all my measuring stuff in one bin, one teaspoon, there you go. What did it say? Two, a baking powder. 
powder, no soda. Don't make that mistake. One, this will make them fluff up. Of course, all you people that already know a lot about baking already know that. Oh shoot, I stuck that in my apples. Guess I'll be rinsing my apples off. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. That's a half. Get a quarter. Shouldn't ever measure your stuff over your bowl like I just did. Why? Because you could like drop the whole thing in there. But you know how it is when you get in the kitchen. You think you know everything. And you just want to get it done. Okay, so now it says to combine egg, milk, and butter. And I need to melt two tablespoons of butter. Maybe 20 ounces of oil. It's in a pan like this, like a deep frying pan. If you have a deep fryer thing, pan of some kind, you certainly can use it, but I don't keep anything like that around. I'd be frying everything in sight. Okay, there's my egg, and then I need some milk, two-thirds of a cup. Two percent. What did I say? Two-thirds of a cup. I want to know something. Why is it? that right-handed people have to look at the wrong side of the measuring cup. They're all that way. So that means you have to put the measuring cup in your right hand, pour with your left hand. Isn't this more dangerous? I don't know. It just don't seem right to me. Two thirds. One third. I have put a little too much. I think it's time for me to get some new measuring cups because I don't like these. They got dotted lines and solid lines and the only, the only thing that's marked is one third and one. So what's two thirds? I'm just gonna guess, I don't know. Okay. 
Okay, so now we need to stir into dry ingredients until smooth. That's combining the egg, the milk, and the butter. So I need a little bowl for that. Or actually, I probably could just put it in this butter. Egg. get a spatula or something of the sort. supposed to turn out kind of like donuts, right? I don't know. We shall see. Okay. Now this is saying to cut your uh, fruit into rings, dip them in the batter, and then put them in the oil. But we're not doing it that way. We're doing little pieces that are incorporated into the dough. But see what I did earlier? I poured all of my baking soda down in there. So I gotta rinse these. recipe we'll see well I did kind of modify it didn't I that looks pretty good that's dough around there so if that really does puff up like it's supposed to it's gonna be good probably could have diced my apples up a little bit smaller but we'll see Now I'm just waiting for my oil to come up to 375. Not near there yet. So I'm gonna clean some stuff up. sit them on here once we pull them out of the hot oil. Let me check my temperature if I can find it. Tell you what, who knows where that is. It seems like I've seen it the other day somewhere. But I think what I can do is just kind of test it with some drops of water to see if it, see if it crackles. Not quite there yet. So we'll keep hanging on until it's time. It says to fry for three minutes. And you can't put them all up in at the same time. Drain, serve hot, sprinkle with confectioner's sugar if desired. I was thinking about maybe 
throwing on some uh, apple pie spice on them. So I'll need to find that. Um, I don't think I have any powdered sugar. Yeah, actually I do have some powdered sugar. We'll see. right there bubbling away but he's not quite as active as I need him to be to put a whole fritter in yet let's do one using a great big tablespoon to kind of pick it up with. Makes me nervous. I'm just going to do a small one. I feel like I have too many apples. them over here in a second once I see that the back side is good and toasty brown. They're getting brown. Slotted spoon. Oh yeah. This looks good y'all. Sure does. Check it out. I was afraid they wouldn't stay together but they are staying together. Put another one in. I think it was a good call making them small. definitely want to be able to leave them in there long enough to get the apples cooked as well so I gotta watch the how hot this oil gets even though I can't find my thermometer I think I can kind of judge how it's going here I think I'm gonna take these first ones out said three minutes, didn't it? I didn't, I did not look at the clock when I put them in. Okay, let's do some more. wanted to make some really huge ones you could just I'm just using this 
oversized tablespoon. It's actually a serving spoon. Um, you know, you can make those great big ones like you see in the grocery store or at the fair. I'm just making them kind of manageable size here. I think this one's done. this while they're hot, right? same size. So let's do that. ones I took out are still really hot. Just got two more. There's two YouTube ladies that I saw do this, um, Jan Cresson and Colored Belly Cooks. The recipes were slightly different. Just like the recipe, recipe in my cookbook wasn't quite the same because it was calling for rings instead of these, you know, donut looking things. Crueler looking shape. Um, but it looks like they're turning out kind of like theirs did, so. This is a baby. This is a baby one. Yeah. So cute. Interestingly, I noticed on Jan Crescent's, um, 
her last couple of them were kind of flat looking like this too. I don't know if it's because it's a little more dough than apple. Because, you know, when you get towards the end of the, the bowl, all of the liquid ingredients are kind of at the bottom. So the dough was, these are doughier than, than the others. I got all this sugar, I might as well put it on there, huh? In here, from the beginning. Y'all, I'm excited. Open this up. See the inside. Mm. It's pretty good. It's not super sweet. Um, we only added two tablespoons of sugar to the dough. So it's not super sweet. You, of course, I do taste the powdered sugar on the outside. The apples are good. They're done. The dough is like a freshly fried donut. So yeah, I'll definitely make these again. I'll put this recipe in the description box. So y'all come back and cook with me again. Talk to you soon.